It has been a long-standing tradition to honor our veterans here in Greenville ISD. And this year, we were not about to let COVID-19 stop us from doing that. And although we can't be together like we normally are, we wanted to put something together for you that was still just as special and let you know that we appreciate you and we honor you on this day. Happy Veterans Day. Hello, my name is David Gish. I'm the Director of Community Outreach for Greenville Independent School District. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us today for our Veterans Day program. Veterans Day, what is it? Why do we celebrate it? What does it mean? Well, it's a legal holiday dedicated to the American veterans of all wars. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, an armistice or ceasefire to hostilities was declared between the Allied nations and Germany in World War I, then known as the Great War. It is a day to remember, to reflect, to extend gratitude to all American servicemen and women. But it is so much more than that. Ready, cut, treason. Howling. Carry. Howling. Ready, cut, order, colors, ready, cut.
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Inscription by Herman Melville To them who crossed the flood and climbed the hill with eyes upon the heavenly flag intent and though the deathful tumult went even until death to them this stone erect where they were overthrown of more than victory the monument In the Brave, a Veterans Day tribute by Joanna Fouche. When America had an urgent need, these brave ones raised a hand. No hesitation held them back. They were proud to take a stand. They left their friends and family. They gave up a normal life. To serve their country and their God, they plowed into the strife. They fought for freedom and for peace on strange and foreign shores. Some lost new friends, some lost their lives in long and brutal wars. Other veterans answered a call to support the ones who fought. Their country had requirements for the essential skills they bought. We salute every one of them, the noble and the brave, the ones still with us here today, and those who rest in a grave. So here's to our country's heroes. They cut above the rest. Let's give the honor that is due to our country's very best.
Alright, Greenville Sea Lions from Greenville High School respectfully requesting permission to utilize your drill area, sir. Mr. Granny. Aye, sir. Order. Oh. And now for a moment of silence for those who have served, who have given their life to serve, and those who will serve in the future.
The other evening I was sitting down at home with my remote control, started channel surfing. And I came upon ESPN. And one of their commentators was making a political point. And he said, we should not sing the national anthem, that it's a war hymn. How dare him? How dare him have the audacity to even suggest that we not continue to acknowledge the very ideals that allowed him the freedom and the right to live in the greatest republic that has been or ever will be created on God's green earth. If Mr. ESPN knew his history of the country, he would know that it was forged by the blood of men and women, patriots who had a vision to which all men were created equal. And we had the God-given right to pursue the opportunities and dream our dreams. He would know that out of the conflict, two of the greatest documents the world has ever seen, the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights, were procured so that man could live as he chose. He would know that the very concepts in which this great nation was founded have been and will continue to be under siege from our enemies. He would also realize that the cost of his freedom is expensive. So expensive, in fact, that men and women have given everything they had, including their lives, to give Mr. ESPN his chance to live as he chooses to pursue his dreams today, tomorrow, and into the future. We are a proud people. We are a proud nation. And we should be proud for the opportunities we provide, not only to our citizens, but to our allies and others that come to our shores seeking liberty, life, and the pursuit of happiness. We all have moments that we're proud. That's only natural. How did you feel when you made your first 100 in school? How did you feel when you took your first drive in your first car by yourself? How did you feel when you told a joke and people actually laughed? Or when you cooked your first meal and people actually ate it? And danced at your first school dance where nobody laughed? And for you 50 year olds and up, how did you feel back in 1980 when the United States hockey team defeated the Soviet Union at Lake Placid for the gold medal? And finally, for you 60 year olds and up, how did you feel on July the 20th, 1969, where on our TV sets we watched a miracle of technology, a TV picture from the moon to the United States and the rest of the world. And we watched the United States astronauts descend on the moon and put the American flag in its proper place. The United States Armed Forces is ready to keep the peace. Peace. What does that word mean? It means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But I believe it means the ability to identify our enemies, the ability to assess their strength, and the ability to defeat them on the field of battle in order to preserve our way of life. This is what our armed forces do each and every day. Our armed forces are the best in the world. Peace through strength has allowed the United States to be the forefront of world affairs. This mindset, peace through strength, gives us the opportunity to flourish. The armed forces are the gatekeepers of this nation and have done their job for the past 254 years. This mindset, peace through strength, is the reason why we have the opportunities to flourish in America. The armed forces are the gatekeepers of this nation and have done their job very well for the past 254 years. And I am quite sure that they will continue to do their job with the same profession and determination. People around the world want to know what it's like to be an American. What's it like to have the opportunities that we have? And I say, how do you describe when you lay down at night to go to sleep, you say your prayers and have peace in your heart. How you describe when you watch your children and grandchildren play their first ball game. How do you describe sitting in a movie theater and seeing John Wayne 
right across the silver screen, coming to the rescue. And how do you describe the feeling you get on the morning of the 4th of July? When you look down the street and see hundreds of the most beautiful flag the world has ever known. And how do you describe the feeling you get when you watch hijacked airplanes full of American citizens crash into the Twin Towers or the Pentagon or an open field in Pennsylvania? It's easy to sit back and take being an American for granted, but it's also easy to think of that. If you enjoy drinking your coffee on the porch and reading the paper, think of that. If you enjoy meeting with your friends at a public place and discussing any topic you choose, think of that. If you believe in the right to defend your home, family, and your way of life, thank the vet. And if you feel a sense of pride, hope, acknowledgement that this nation, the United States of America, is the greatest of all attempts to self-govern its people, and that we have the right and the resolve to defend and protect our way of life when there's no life left to give, thank the vet. Ladies and gentlemen, nowhere in the world or for the, the fact in history, has there been anywhere near the quality, the precision, the skill level, the fortitude, and the determinant displayed by the United States military. These men and women display each day the ideals that make America great. The sacrifice, the honor, the dignity, the resources, and the desire to succeed. And when one of their fellow patriots fall in combat, the highest ideal of all, Never, ever leave behind any one of us. Bring everyone home. I'd like to take a moment to thank you for joining us today. It's been a privilege and a pleasure to bring you this program. We'd like to ask you to say your prayer for the United States. Say your prayer for the vets. God bless America. God bless our veterans. And thank you for this opportunity. Goodbye.